Hello again, hello. Um, okay, this is video number two. Um, I've got a bit of a cold you might be able to hear. I don't sound as great as I normally do. Um, thank you everyone for watching the first video. I was quite overwhelmed with um, how many people who watched it and all the things that people said, you know, um, it makes a massive difference. Um, you feel, I guess I feel quite alone with what I'm going through at the moment and those sort of comments and especially people who've been through the same sort of thing or know people that have, it makes a massive difference. So thank you for that. Um, okay, this little video is, I'm just going to talk about what colitis is and what's going to happen, what surgery I'm going to have. I know sort of last time I talked about what my story is and what I've kind of tried and all that sort of stuff. So, um, the first thing I'll do is talk about what colitis is because obviously I say, oh, I've got colitis and people are like, all oh, right, but most people don't really know what it is because you wouldn't. It's not a, a kind of disease that people talk about all the time, I suppose. Um, so, for the science, I better put on my science specs. Okay. Um, so, colitis, well, it's a bit weird. These are 3D glasses, but nothing's actually in 3D. Um, Colitis is um, an inflammatory bowel disease, so it's not an irritable bowel disease, it's inflammatory. Um, and I'm going to do a little demonstration of what happens. It's basically all to do with your immune system, your autoimmune system. So obviously what happens normally in your body is, for example, say I cut my arm and it got infected, my body would send the white blood cells to the area where the infection is to fight the infection off. So here we've got the ugly doll who's going to play the part of the white blood cells. Hello, I'm white blood cells. And here we've got this cushion which is going to play the part of the bowel. So this is the large bowel or the large intestine. I'm going to show you a picture in a minute. Basically what happens with colitis is the white blood cells think that the bowel is under infection. So they quickly shimmy off to fight the infection oh, and they send out enzymes because they think there's something wrong so they're yeah I'm gonna kick the infection's ass but what actually happens is there is no infection it's your body like fighting against itself so oh, that, that's learned to be blood oh, it's actually a vest but it'll do oh. okay so because the white blood cells get completely crazy and basically beat up your bowel your bowel gets inflamed, hence the term inflammatory bowel disease. So your bowel gets inflamed and it can bleed and it becomes sore. So when you go to the toilet, obviously if you think about it, I'll show you a picture. This is a picture of the inside of your bowel. And so obviously if you think about it, when the food has gone through from the small intestine, the small bowel, and goes into the large intestine, as it's passing around, obviously if this area here is all inflamed, it's painful. So imagine if you've cut your arm and your arm is sore and painful. If you were, part, if you were rubbing it like this, something was passing past it, it would hurt, it would be painful. And so when you've got colitis and your colon is inflamed, it means that when you go to the toilet and you pass, uh, you know, a poo, you, your stool goes past, it's pressing on it, it's rubbing on it, and so it's painful. So when you're on the toilet, you have lots of pain. That was the basically the worst thing for me, was being just intolerable amounts of pain. Um, you have diarrhea, you bleed because you're obviously so inflamed that the blood is released from your from your from the wall of your colon. Um, what else? I used to be sick a lot because of the pain. Um, also urgency, that's another massive debilitating thing about having colitis, is it's a case of like, any minute now I could feel the need to go to the toilet and I couldn't just carry on talking and doing this video. I'd have to go there and then, otherwise I'd just shit myself. Um, which is delightful. Um, so it's quite amusing because you know, you get in situations where you're talking to somebody and they are going blah 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 and all of a sudden in your head you're like, Oh, I need to go to the toilet. And you have to literally just go, yeah, bye, I've got to go to the toilet, bye, and just run off. Um, so it's all right when people know because I don't think you're being rude. But, um, you know, this is the issue. This is why it's hard to hold down a job. It's hard to go out and have a great social life. Um, it makes life really difficult because you're constantly thinking, where's the nearest toilet? What if I need to go and there isn't one? 
um, you know, millions of times I've been in situations where I've been driving and I've had to just like race in my car and pull in at a McDonald's and run into the toilet or use a toilet in a shop. Um, and it's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> um, so yes, that is what having colitis is like. Um, so I'll take off these specs as we've done the science part. Um, now I'm going to just talk about what surgery I'm having because there's different sort of um, ways that people have surgery who've got colitis, different things you can have done. Um, this is like quite common what I'm having done. So I will show the diagram. So this is what I was showing you before. This is a normal person's inside. So that's the small bowel. And it's confusing because people say small bowel or small intestine. And this is the large bowel that goes around here. And that's the anus there where you poo it all out. Lovely. So what's going to happen is, this is two other pictures. So um, I can't actually see them because I'm too far away. Um, okay, so this is normal. And then this is what's going to happen to me. They're going to take out all of the large bowel. So I won't have any of this because this is the bit that gets inflamed. This is the bit that's a problem. Then what will happen, this is, I'm having this done in one surgery so sometimes this is two you might sometimes have the surgery where they remove all of your large bowel and then you stop and then you have another surgery which is to create the pouch so this is basically a piece of your small intestine so if you look at this diagram here there's the small intestine so they take a piece of your small intestine and they sort of zigzag it and then they stitch it together so it basically forms a pouch so rather than having a large bowel, I'll have a pouch inside. So it will look like this once I've had the first surgery. I'll have the pouch down here. Let me just check this is right. Yeah, so the pouch will be down here and then I'll have the ileostomy, which is the piece which sticks out of your body. And that will be part of the small intestine and that will stick out. So there's no more pictures than here. That bit... The ileostomy is the bit of your small intestine which they pull outside of your body and that's what the colostomy bag is attached to and the reason that you that I, I have to have the colostomy bag is basically because they form the internal pouch and that has to have time to settle and heal and then once that's healed I would have another operation which will take the small intestine that's sticking out, so the ileostomy, back inside and connect that to the internal pouch and the internal pouch acts as a large bowel. So, when I've got the ileostomy, um, I'll obviously have a colostomy bag because the poo will just come out of the small intestine and go into the bag. Um, and I've got a selection of colostomy bags here, as you can see. There we go, there's a little selection, it's lovely. Um, I'll use this one because this has got a, a hole cut in it. So basically you can see from these if I go close up, that they have lots of different, see if the camera focuses on that, lots of different size, sizes that it can be cut to. So this one has been cut to a certain size. And what you basically do is, this is like a sticky, this comes off, it's sticky. So you'll peel this off completely, and then the hole will be sort of, let me walk back a bit, will be kind of here-ish, I think. And so peel this off, and then that sticks over, the piece of your small intestine that's sticking out of your body and then the bag fills with your poo basically and then when you need to go to the toilet basically this has a let me see this has a bit on it that you can undo and roll down and then op it opens like that and then it all just comes out of there so you just empty that into the toilet clean it up roll it back up again da -da 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 like that and then you're done and so you change your I mean everyone's different so I'm just talking about what I think is going to happen but things might be slightly different obviously and um, things like how often I change my bag you know I probably change it about once a day and um, so you just empty it maybe four or five times a day maybe more maybe less um, and you can get different size bags so um, you can get bags that are bigger and bags that are smaller and it just depends on preference and choice so I'll go through a process of finding out what works for me and what doesn't and the size of the ileostomy as well so as I say because there's all the different measurements you measure your um, stoma and see how big it is and then when you order these bags they cut it for you to the right size um, 
so yeah that's basically how it works what the operation is and um, so as I say I'm having two operations sometimes people have three so if you have emergency surgery often they don't want to create the internal pouch so just remove the colon then wait then do the pouch then wait then do the operation to join it all up together but because I'm electing to have the surgery done so I'm choosing to have it done rather than be told I have to because uh, it's emergency um, because other, other than my colitis my body is fine and I'm kind of fit and healthy um, I can have the two bits done and then just hopefully wait around three months and then get it joined up um, so that's all that and then I was just going to talk a bit about how I feel about it all because um, it's mental I mean it's very clever and it's amazing that you know all this sort of stuff can be done and it's kind of weird it feels quite surreal um, yeah I've been trying to do stuff to take my mind off it and it's hard because you know it's easy on a um, it's easy here when I'm sitting in my living room on my own to say I'm absolutely terrified because I am um, you know it's not easy it's not it's not ideal but the choice the other option is you know to keep living the way I've been living which is pretty crap um, oh sorry I'm a bit of a cry baby um, so yeah I think I'm fine, you know, the majority of the time I'm totally fine and it's the right decision, but it's kind of weird choosing to have it done. It's very weird. Because, you know, who wants to pick to have surgery? Who wants to pick to go into hospital? No one. It's completely crazy. But, you know, you weigh up the options and you take your time and think about, you know, what the right thing to do is for long term. And, you know, I've lost... Th there's three... I've, I'm a teacher by sort of training and I've had to give up three jobs in schools because of my colitis and I did work in an office for a while and that was more kind of feasible to be really sick you know I could run to the toilet and be on the toilet for a while or be sick and stuff but I don't want to work in an office I want to have a job that I like and you know I'm young enough to have a career um or the other thing kind of obviously there's like you know there could be complications and all that sort of stuff and touch wood nothing will happen like that um, there are some sort of things like I can't eat, when I've got the colostomy bag I can't eat um, nuts and sweet corn and mushrooms um, and so I have to be kind of a bit careful when I first have the colostomy bag but I can still do things like drink alcohol and stuff but I'm not going to feel like doing that, it's going to take a long time to kind of get back on my feet because it's quite big sort of surgery um, and then kind of look into the future what it'll basically mean is that I won't ever have colitis because they will remove my colon and so you can't have colitis if you don't have colon um, so that'll be brilliant and hopefully it'll mean um, I'll go to the toilet you know more frequently than you would normally do so I might go for a poo like three or four times a day um, but there'll be no pain or no bleeding or anything like that and it won't be my poo won't be like normal it won't be um, as um, solid because the one of the purposes of the large bowel is to take fluid out of your what you're eating um, and so it's not like not as bad as diarrhea but it's kind of not as formed as a normal stool would be but I can really cope with that um, and the other thing is getting pregnant so um, it doesn't mean that I can't have children or anything like that but um, I think they were saying that oh, something confusing like on average people who've had it, uh, the surgery done, um, I find it 50% more difficult. Oh, that's the bloody telephone. We'll just ignore that. I'll, I'll pick that up in a minute. Um, yeah, people find it about 50% more difficult to get pregnant. It's going to be funny how this is going to be up. <laughs> um, so, but at the moment, um, in England, you can get IVF free. So that's pretty cool. So I'm not worrying about that too much at the moment. Um, right, I'm going to have to go because I've done nearly 15 minutes and I've just thought too long to be blabbing on. Um, but I'll do another one just before I go into hospital, which will be a week today, or week tomorrow rather. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. And again, if anyone's got any questions or anything like that, please um, just uh, put, put them on an email. Okay, thanks very much. Bye.